Good afternoon. Today is the 28th day of December 2015, and I'm very, very happy that we have Fabienne with us. No, it's Fabienne. <laughs> and uh, we have so many things to talk about with you, but could you first tell us a little bit about your memories of when you first heard of Mother? Oh, when I first heard of Mother yes. was uh, in my grandfather's house where I was brought up in Paris. And uh, they used to have meetings there for the darshans around the um, center, what was it called, center of education or something like that. Uh, whatever, this association was in my grandfather's house. So they used to have these um, um, gatherings and there was a mother's talk and mother's pictures and pictures of the ashram were shown there. So when I was, I started becoming conscious, maybe when I was five years old, <laughs> then, um, you know, I got informed with all that and it was always a pleasure for me to see the people gathering and, and it was a beautiful time, incense was burning and and that's where I saw uh, pictures of the mothers first. And, and she, yeah, she's yes. she's my grandfather's mother. So, your that's grandfather's how. mother. Yeah. So you are great. So great. Mother had one son, my grandfather. Andre. Andre, uh, Andre, yeah. da, Andre. Yes, yes. And he had two daughters, and so you, Janine is my mother. Je, Janine and Purna here. Yeah, Janine right? and Purna. And, and, and I'm the daughter of Janine. So your mother's great great granddaughter? I'm mother's great granddaughter. <laughs> <laughs> one. One great one step, granddaughter. Great granddaughter. How wonderful. So that's how that's why this was going on in the house and that's how I got first in touch with knowing, you know, about the mother and who the mother was. And when did you first come to Pondicherry? And I came first in nineteen sixty six. I was 13, probably, something mm -hmm. like that, mm -hmm. with uh, Roger's team of architects oh. that traveled in '66 to Auroville that was not yet built. It was right. just the beginning of the project. So I traveled with them. We went through Syria. <laughs> we Ooh. went to Palmyra, you know, then we went to Fatepur Sikri and uh, Agra, Varanasi, Benares. So it was a caravan that you went by <coughs> land, of course. No, we went by um, by plane. By plane. And then oh. we arrived in, in Pondicherry. I don't know when, when it was, but that's then when I met Mother for the first time, was then. And yeah. what, can you tell us a little of what you experienced well, in front of her? Yeah, I think you are gathering um, you interviews really to to know about how the people felt when they met the mother, right? Yes, I that and many, many other aspects. But, but in every interview, mother's presence comes through. Mm, that's so it came through with Janine the other day. It was yeah. incredible. When you mm -hmm. see it, then you say, oh my goodness, you know, she's behind all of this. Oh, well, she is behind all <laughs> <She> of this. <it. laughs> <laughs> so, so then... So what happened the other day, somebody brought this uh, flower called Divine Smile. Oh, yes. You know, it's oh, very a very well. fragrant. Little hibiscus. Very fragrant. No, it's a, I'll show you. It's a very fragrant flower, Divine Smile. Oh, Divine. Divine Smile okay, is sorry, long divine petals smile. like yes, that. Yes, Eternal Smile, I was thinking. Of. Divine Smile is the champa, the yes, white champa. Yes, it's the white champa. Yes, yes. And so she brought that flower to me and I said, oh, it smells like in Mother's room. And she said, oh, did it smell like that in mother's room? And then I realized that people don't know actually uh, how it was when you went into mother's yes, room. Yes. And I thought of maybe a little describing that because it good, was good. it was really exceptional. It was uh, at the time. You would wait in the staircase, you know, with your flowers in your yeah. knees like that, and everybody's waiting on the golden staircase there. Yes. <laughs> And so you'd be very patient and nice and cool and quiet. <clears throat> and my friend described that. She said, do you remember when people used to wait and then they would enter mother's room and stay five minutes or something like that and come out and they would be all radiant when they came out? <laughs> you know, really, really, it was like that. 
And I think those things are important. So you would, then it would be your turn and you would go inside the room. And I remember her, she was always turning her head like that, looking because you would enter from the back. She would be sitting facing the samadhi, right? At the time I went, it was like ah, that. Yes. So she'd be fa facing the samadhi and then she would turn her head as if she wants to see you from the moment you enter over there and she will follow you and follow you and follow you until you are in front of her. I mean, like, not a second was like she was not attentive to what was happening, you know. That was the feeling that you got like that. And then uh, to the, the, the fragrance in the room was because she had flowers on her right side here. You know, you would give her flowers and then she would pick, choose some flowers for you and give you the flowers. So with the meaning, of course, going on and all that. But then she always had like a bunch of flowers on her side there. And that's what was giving that fragrance to the, to the whole room. So you entered, it was never warm, hot or anything. You were always comfortable there. And then you had that smell of the flower, and then you had her, that she was like, she was so beautiful. She was an older person, right? But she was so beautiful anyway. You know, it's not like we see, oh, you have to be young. No, she was like full of, you know, I call it happy joy. <laughs> you know? And what uh, her, her skin was like uh, translucent, you know? It, it was pink and golden orange and, and, and very delicate. The feeling that you had in front of her that was that she was, it was something very subtle and very delicate, right? And very refined. And you could see that she had, in, in, on her body was like, she had just what was necessary to hold the spirit, you know? No fat, no muscle, no extra stuff. It was just... Like, and she always had her feet flat like that on the little stool like that with um, Japanese socks, you know, they, they are white yes, socks yes, with, the, yes. with the thumb with, like yeah, that. Yeah. So she would be sitting like that and, and, and the feeling was of, you know, and her clothes were so immaculate, immaculate. I mean, not a wrinkle on them, just perfect and always it was satin or silk, you know, and very tender. Um, uh, colors, very pastel colors, pink and very um, white and pink and, and, and maybe a little orangey or, and embroideries and, and everything was like so immaculate, you know, that she was wearing. <coughs> so that was the feeling that you got there. And then um, have you, have you, would you describe her this way when you remember her? Uh, each one of us is different. Yeah, that's what I'm And I saw her in 61. Yes, very When early. it was downstairs was in Sri Aurobindo's room. Yes. And we were alone. Not yes. even Champaklal was yes. there. Yes, very nice. And for me, it was all love and power. Yes. Tremendous power. Yes. And just this love that poured out at you. But force also. That is the amazing thing, that you can have force. And then the other day I was realizing force is, is not like, you know, like we think of anger. No, no, no. The force is an intensity of energy. Yes. Would you describe it? Concentrated like intensity, yes. Concentrated intensity. Yes. Like it's yes. like almost like solid. Yes, right? yes, eh? yes. It's almost concrete and solid. Now, you came before mother, you knelt down and tell us. Yeah, so, and then, so you come before her, and then um, what happened later on, I was seeing her in the same place. I never saw her outside, which I'm like, oh, I look at the uh, films, you know, and I want to see her walk like that, so yeah. strong. But anyway, uh, she was already retired when I came, 66. Yeah. Huh? And I saw her every Wednesday. So I would go in and I would come in front of her and go on the side. And then she would take my hands and put her my hands on her knees. And then she'd look at me 
and then she will uh, usually I never talked with her because when I saw her uh, the, the the impression was more like there is nothing to ask anymore <laughs> you know there is no question to ask it's all there yes all the answers are there so I never really talked much with her but she always asked me if I was eating well <laughs> oh. <laughs> bonjour douce mère and then she say bonjour comment vas tu then she will look at me for a while and she would say are you eating well <laughs> you know? and then she'd give me biscuits and different kinds of food so, that was given to uh, her so in a little basket she would have things prepared and so this was beginning at the age of 13 and then so 13 I went back to France and I came ah. back in 60 that was in 6970 ah. like that but we had the foundation of Oroville. I came in 68 so Tell us yeah. about this. But I wanted to say another yes. thing then so she would be sitting there sometimes she would ask me to sit a little further away oh. so I would go and sit and and then we would be uh, like it was more like a meditation with her right and that was very interesting because I asked my mother also afterwards, I said, did she used to go in trance when you were with her? Or she said, no, she was mostly working with her, she, my mother. Oh. She was working with the letters of the French people writing and what to answer them. She was talking about that with you oh, earlier. Yeah, yeah. But when I was with her, she would go in trance. So she would, you would see her and I was telling Judson ah. uh, before that she would go into a deep breath, you see, and then she would be in trance for a while. And then, you know, if you don't make a move, if you, if you don't make a sound or if you don't move, if my hands were on her knees, then I would move her. Otherwise, she would not come back. Oh. She would be in trance, gone, immobile still, you know, and she's gone somewhere and so then I had to not overtake you know my time was like half an hour or something like ah. that 20 minutes or half an hour and then she has all her different programs so then I would move a little and she'd come back and then she would look at me intently like that for a while and you don't know why she's looking like that and then she'll smile and you're like oh. <laughs> you know <laughs> <laughs> what is this? <laughs> so that that was an important thing to say that she really had such a presence, <clears throat> and then the feeling also those days was I was thinking about it, thinking of the interview and what is of value, you know, to yes. say. And um, another thing was like you were taken care of in such a way when she was there that um, it was really like having a, a, a divine parent mm. you know it was it was the ultimate parent that you can have which left you as an adult with no fear no worry no it was like beautiful and with um, there, there was so much happiness being here yes. in this atmosphere that sometimes I was like, what shall I do with all that happiness? What shall I do with all that happiness? And I would say, oh. give it to her, give it to her, give it to her. It was really coming from her and, and, and so much that oh. you can hold it, you know. It's like so happy to be here. It's the right place. It's the right... It's the, you don't even know how right it is. It's, it's so right, you yes, know. It yes. was just wonderful, <coughs> wonderful. And uh, you would put your head on her feet or her I, lap? No, <laughs> that's an interesting question. Champaklal told me once to put my head on her knees. He said, put your head on her knees. She was in trance. <laughs> and so I... Uh, I didn't want to because she was like so special to me. I, you know, I just wanted to make Champaklal happy. So, <laughs> so I, 
very slowly. Instead, what he wanted me to do was grab her knees and put my, oh. you know, my, like he would probably do. But she was so special, I said, okay, I'll do it. But And then I touched my my uh, forehead? forehead to, to her, her knees. Knee, hardly like poof, like that. And she came back from trance and I was like, oh. And I don't know what happened, you know, but I had like a, it was strange, I had like a vision of a meadow with open space and, and you know, I don't know, I don't know really what that is. But then another... ...legged and then I felt, you know, kind of like a suggestion of putting my forehead on her feet and I was like, are they nuts? You know, how can I put my forehead on the mother's feet who is in her even she's the divine mother, she is she is you know, she is like so much and 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 she is even in her physical body and I can't I can't even touch her feet, you know. So I took my legs and poof I went like this and I'm not going to do that. You know, and then she laughed. After that, she laughed and she asked me to come and to kneel in to kneel in front of her, and she kissed me on the forehead. So that was that was something to feel her. So you went yeah. to her every Wednesday. Yes, I For was how long? privileged. I didn't know it was a privilege at the time. I thought you know anybody goes and and. Uh, and sees her any time they ask to see her, but it was not like that, I realized no. afterwards. No. You couldn't no. see her only on your birthday. That's right. right? In the, from 66, certainly, yes. only on your birthday. Yeah. And Except I didn't for know Sat Prem and Oh, well, Sat Prem was so working, that. people yeah. working. People with who her. work, secretaries. Yeah. 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 And so, yes, I was seeing her every Wednesday. and. Uh, and, and yes, that was a privilege. And also another thing, I was giving her flowers every day. You know, I, was, I could give her flowers every day. <coughs> and receive fl flowers from her. And since I was not talking when I met her, when I was with her, um, I would ask questions. I could ask questions anytime, write to her anytime I had a question and send it and she would answer the same day. And you've kept and I, those letters? Yeah, I, I, there are not that many. I didn't ask uh -huh. that many questions. I remember asking her. <laughs> I was like, um, uh, you know, I, I asked the question. I wrote on a little sheet of paper while waiting somewhere and mm -hmm. quickly sent it to her. It was not a letter written, yeah. this, that. No, just a little half-cut thing. And I just wrote... Uh, does one really have to um, pacify the vital and uh, reach mental silence before one can see the divine? Because I'm like, oh my God, if I have to pacify the vital and, and reach mental silence, how oh, many is never going to happen, right? <laughs> so that was my question. And uh, she answered, I was very struck by that. She answered, everyone has his own way. Okay. Try and you will see. How beautiful. She didn't say, yes, you have to do this, yeah. you have to do yeah. that. No, nothing like that. Each, each one of us has their own way. She wrote similar to me. Yes, to Very you similar. also? Yes. Yeah. So, now we're in 1966, 67, mm. and Huta and Mother are talking about the Matrimandir and the gardens there. What did Mother say to you about or Not Oroville? Nothing about, um, see, nothing about uh, Oroville. We didn't talk about that. I went with the architects that were going to participate. I went with the group of architects because we traveled together. So we were all together in uh, Mother's room one day. And... Uh, <coughs> She talked with me. those things are recorded. Uh -huh. If you have the names of those people, one of them I remember asked her mother, "Are you God?" Are you Do God? you know that answer? You don't have that answer. Uh, 
we'll find it for you. Okay. And she said, we all are God potentially. Yeah. Uta asked her the same question. Yeah. yeah. And mother said, come tomorrow. <laughs> and Uta came and she couldn't even tell me. She just said, Nara, she said, from here up. And that's it. She couldn't even verbalize it with the experience. Mm -hmm. Mother showed her that she was the Divine Mother. Mm. So how... So uh, yeah, you were asking yeah. about Oroville and yeah, all that. Yeah, and uh, was and Christoph in that group? Uh, no, no, that Walk, Christoph that was later. Was later. later. Christoph oh, I was see. later. Yeah. Okay. Yes. That was very really early 66. It was before the Foundation. Right? Okay. And then for my experience is that um, uh, she asked my grandfather whether I could come to put the soil of Oroville in the urn. Oh, because mother I was, asked him. Yes, because I was living in his house, right? Mm -hmm. It was my, grand, my grandfather, my grandmother, right. and my mother and myself. <coughs> and so I was living in his house in Paris. And uh, so she asked him whether I could come to um, to put the soil of Oroville in the urn with Kalia, my cousin, you know. So by chance, you know, normally the children cannot uh, avoid going to school in France. It's it's forbidden by law and <laughs> all that. But I was doing ballet at the time. I was studying to become a ballet dancer. And so um, I was out of the school system and learning and doing my studies through correspondence. So because of that, I was able to come oh, to, yeah. to Oroville and, and uh, I carried the flag and Kalia poured the um, soil of Oroville in the urn. So that was my um, experience of that uh, time of uh, the inauguration of Oroville. And uh, she called us, I think it was a day early, and she gave me the flag, like, you know, it was a, really a very joyful and, and uh, how to say... Like uh, a ceremony uh, of the divine, important, the divine. important, serious, important yeah. joy yeah. <laughs> duty. Yes. Uh -huh. You know, and she gave me the, the flag like that, and she gave the box of soil to Kalia. And I think it was kept in the night, and we, we carried it to... Oh, she gave the box of soil to Kalia. Yes, yes, I soil of all of it. I was there photographing. Mm. Mother gave me permission to photograph the ceremony. Nice, nice. So I remember it quite well. What did you feel at that moment at the urn? Well, you know, it was like... Um, it was really the the... the Enthusiasm, the energy, the positive, like, go for it, kind of new possibilities for the whole world and everybody and humanity. And, <clears throat> and um, mostly it was a feeling of being in the right place at the right time with the right people. You know, with she being really, you couldn't say that you had any <laughs> possibility of saying that she was not doing the right thing every second, basically. You know, it was like a big enthusiasm and joy, and that's how I lived it. Yeah, many of us. Yeah. Many of us, the yeah. same, yes. Yeah, the same. So you continued to see Mother after that? Um, yeah, after that is when I then I settled down in Oroville for a while in uh, Four Commerce. I was in Aspiration, then Four Commerce. When Bob, <coughs> when Bob and was Deborah the, were there? Yes. We did a dance program with Deborah, <coughs> Bob Lola. Yeah. So that's when he was there. Then I moved, then I moved to the ashram afterwards, after that. And that's when I started seeing her more regularly, when I moved to oh. Bondi. Yeah, and uh, certainly the you know the most important thing is to is to feel her presence now, not yes. even remember what she yes. was or yes. it's it's good to to remember. But 
we can feel her. We can feel her now. I mean, when I come to the Samadhi, it's like I was saying, oh, to show up in those room, I got by chance. And <laughs> twice it happened. Uh, recently, I took my mother to uh, Shobindo's room oh. because she cannot, you know, follow the darshan queue mm -hmm. and all that. So it was arranged that she will go separately, and I brought her upstairs. And she was sitting there, and then the girl came and she said, "Is she all right? Does she want to move?" And I didn't understand that they wanted us out of there, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't. I, I think so. I think that's what they were uh -huh. meaning, you know. But we ended up sitting in Shobindo's room for, I think, an hour, you oh. know. And I'm telling you, the presence there is there. And that's when I really felt this um, force as being a, a solid block of energy, you know. Oh, yes. And that happened by chance, because she came again and said, is she all right? Can she sit? for a longer time. I said, yes, she can sit for a longer time. <laughs> you know, sure, she can sit for a longer Wonderful. time. Wonderful. And then was, after the third time, I was like, oh, she was telling us maybe we can go to the parlor where you met mother for the yes. first time, which is just yes. must be a blessing to have met her there oh, at the yes. time. Because that's a very yes. special place. Yes. We got Judson and I to meditate there. When Kumut was there, we would go every morning yes. and she would let us sit in mother's parlor for, you know, like uh, yeah. half an hour or so. Yeah. And I mean, phew, it's like the places, the matrimonial is the same. Our friend said sometimes he goes and he thinks five minutes have passed and it's four hours, you know. Yes. is there, the presence is there. And when I go to the Samadhi, which is something I want to say on tape also, if somebody mm. sees that, is that <coughs> um, just imagine you are at the Samadhi. Imagine yourself being somewhere else, even though you are in that place, and you compare the atmospheres. Where are you going to find this? It's there in the Samadhi. It's there at Mother's Parlor, very strong. It's there in Shirobindo's room, very strong. It's there even, you know, in, in Pondi. I, I feel it like that. And I think it's important that, you know, we realize that it's available now. And I wouldn't even say, for me, coming back, I feel the thing is more accessible and is even stronger than before, you know. Another thing I wanted to say that's funny also, because when she passed away, mother, I was here, and um, she was put on that bed in the on that couch in the meditation, meditation room. room, right? Yes. And um, so everybody was going in the file and coming back and going yes. as much to see her. And I had not heard the instructions at all. So I broke the line and I sat down there and I was like, why people are not sitting here? I'm very happy sitting here. And why are they going on? You know, I didn't know you're not supposed to sit there. So I sat there for hours. I see. And no one stopped you? <laughs> no one stopped me. Uh, uh, Niroda was there sitting, mm -hmm. and was I was just behind him. And and I was just, you know, it, she, same thing. Her, her body was laying in the on the couch, and um, it was so full of force. That's what I saw. Yeah. That's how I felt it. It was full of, uh, of course, love, you know, it was different kind of love. And then that, like, her body was just restful and like I, as if she was concentrated and present in that body, you know, even though she had left the body. And very strangely, we worked at the samadhi and we worked with the flowers and they opened up the samadhi and she was um, laid there. But somehow the whole experience of those days, it was like I was carried with joy. You know, there was never a moment that I would feel... Of course I felt, well, you know, it's, it's going to be diff different 
you know, she's gone, but she knows what she's doing, first of all. She knows what she's doing. And then um, it didn't matter somehow. That's, I never felt grief or, you know, it's not good. No, it was more of a... I was carried with uh, joy. It was very strange. Oh, beautiful. Very beautiful. strange, yeah. I because was, it wasn't the feeling of many people. Yeah, I don't the know about that. The opposite was grief. There was a lot of grief. A lot grief. of grief. A lot of grief. Sure. Sure. There were those who were so close to her physically. Yeah. Yeah. I, that was a great blessing for you. And so, today, tell us about what you're doing, your work. Oh, now I'm, I'm, I'm uh, plunged in savitri. Because, you know, there's a big thing that should be also not accepted anymore is uh, lots of people say, oh, Shubhobindo is so difficult to read and you can't understand and, you know, it's impossible. And so you read the letters here and there and you end up not reading anything and not really getting to it. And then one day I thought, my God, I have to read Savitri before I die, you know. <laughs> so... Uh, I started reading and I went through and I was like, oh my God, I understand, you know, it's like revelation. And then, so I started rereading it and um, I got the bright idea of recording myself, see? And so I, re I recorded and what happens, I advise anybody to do that in their own voice. It's very easy now with the computer. You just speak into the computer and you have the reading of your own voice for yourself to listen to. So what happens is that you can listen and listen and listen to the same canto over and over again. And whenever you can get rid of all the other stuff that bugs you, <laughs> mm -hmm. you lie down, you put the earplugs or you listen and you can really enjoy the thing so much. I mean, it is just unbelievable what the way he wrote, the way he put words together, the, the transmission that happens, the, the, oh, it's like endless, endless bliss just diving into that. And so if I have to say what kind of work I do now, you know, their work was play, and play was only work. That's how it comes in Savitri, uh, right? Yes. Their work was play, and play it was only work. Yeah. And, and, and every line, sometimes two words, you can't imagine how somebody puts those two words together. You can't imagine how that phrase has come out from what, where, how. And you're reading in English. Oh yes. You're reading in the yeah, original. I have no difficulty with ah. the, with the English. See. Every Thursday and Saturday evening, right here, at five five o'clock, Alok and I have a series called Explorations in Savitri. We'll be here. And we read line by line. He, where are you? He where reads are you now? We're in book uh, two, canto three. Okay. It goes very slowly. <coughs> But it's a 45-minute period. They all attend. We will be here. Huh? Judson <coughs> is my husband, yes. companion, friend, yes. buddy. Good. <laughs> all of that, all wrapped in one. <laughs> Hero, dreamer. <laughs> can you can you recall some more things about mother and let's say people who came around her or? Pavitra People? was wonderful, like my ah. mother said. Pavitra, yes. you knew Pavitra, of course. Yes, course, I do. Being in yeah, he wrote to me, yes. yes? I, have, I have letters yes. from him, yes. See, Pavitra was a friend of my grandfather because both of them were polytechnicians originally. Ah. They, they went to the same school in Paris. Pavitra ah. was a year before my grandfather. Ah. And so they were very close, and I got access to Pavitrada because he was friends of my grandfather. 
And uh, Pavichada was a wonderful person, wouldn't you say? For me, he was embodying his name, which is purity, right? Pavitra means yes. purity. Um, very, very French, but like he had gotten rid of the bad French things, you know. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so he had the tradition of the. It had. He had a kind of. Uh, it's not nobility, aristocracy. Aristocracy, I aristocracy. think so. I would say that would That's be the word, I yes. Say. And I don't think he comes from yes. any really aristocratic family, but oh. he had the, the, the pure side of aristocracy, you can say, a nice mind. And then it was nice for me to know that he had come to the mother, not directly like that, but after looking for a path, after looking yes. for a way, he went to the... Nepal or the to the Buddhists and mm -hmm. he was looking and looking for <clears throat> answers before he arrived in Pondicherry and then found mother and, and uh, that was it for him. That was the answer, that was the path, that was the truth, that was and then he worked us, so he was wonderful, yes. And you remember mother's writing about how he left his body. Yes, I remember I that. She I'll she never said that this. Uh, she said that he he got absorbed in her. When he passed away, he got absorbed in Consciously, her. Consciously, he was putting every part of himself into her. And Mother said he couldn't have done it as he was in this life. It must have been some from a few, former life, that power to completely put oneself into the mother she even said she even said that uh, she she didn't she didn't know that he would be capable of doing that yes, right yes i yes, love that yes, and, yes you know i love it because you know she says oh i didn't know and i like that i like to point out that very often she says oh i don't know i didn't know yeah. I, you know yes that's very nice you know yes, yes. so she did say oh i never uh you know, I, I didn't know that he would be capable of doing right, that, putting right. himself, passing himself. I don't remember the details because I read that like full speed, everything I wanted to know, the whole, you yeah. know, yeah. <laughs> the whole, whole thing. So I don't remember all the details, but yes, he, he, he passed into the mother and you say yes. step by step like yes. that. How does one do that, right? And he, yeah, he was, so he was nice. Who else I remember? I Who remember else? Vasuda Ben. Ah. Vasuda Ben was the attendant to the mother yes. before Kumud came by. Yes. Vasuda Ben was a wonderful. Uh, Champaklal. <laughs> Champaklal was a darling, right? Yes. <laughs> Can you recall so some? Wonderful moments with him? Well, also I didn't talk with him either, ah. you know, uh, just like smile and just be happy to see each other and, and uh, just his expressions. And, and, uh, many people had and can still have, many people had that, uh, was just like a simple happy joy, joy, you know, like they, just happy to be to be together right there with her and, and 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 it's like there was some kind of extreme simplicity also I felt um, those days because uh, you knew if there was any difficulty you could always ask her what to do you know so that's why I mentioned her as a parent because that's how a child is with his parents, right? Like a, a four-year-old is like totally uh, unafraid because the parents are going to deal with the, everything. So yeah. she was the parent uh, yeah. dealing with everything and you knew that you can always refer to her or whatever. So you, you had a kind of a... Uh, some worries are, are, you know, just taken away from you in that sense. And uh, I guess now we have to... So, first of all, it shows you that you need um, silence. You need um, 
you need to find the stillness. It's there everywhere when there is a important passage or important happening. The stillness is mentioned. So the stillness is necessary. And he mentions the eternal moment. And the eternal moment whom the immortals live. And he mentions the eternal moment as the paradisal note. The paradisal note. The, you know, it's a note from paradise being the eternal moment. It is, it, as far as I understand, <clears throat> that is what we have to uh, realize or experience is find the eternal moment and there she is there. Yes. She is there yes. all the time. Yes. And that is her atmosphere, that is the atmosphere at the Samadhi, that is the atmosphere in her room and in her parlor. And, and if you go into the meditation room late at night, Early morning is nice too. I see. Yeah, we go, I used to go before seven, you have to go. Seven people start coming in and then mm -hmm. there's more hustle bustle. But if, and late at night is it's just... So this is good to mention that those possibilities are there. We, sti we still have access to very special uh, places, moments, knowledge, uh, just like we can even make better of it, having, yes. having known her or not. I mean, there is one thing that would be nice to do is to ask people what spiritual experiences they have had. Make it anonymous. Don't Maybe. say, don't yeah. say. Yeah. Yeah. Make it anonymous and not a video just the huh. record, because if you talk to people, they, they will tell you they have had spiritual experiences or other oh, things. Yes. There is a lady that told me that she dreams of the mother every night. And she told me because she had a dream of Judson, and she said, she said he was a very good man. Oh. <laughs> There's so, a group of teachers who bring young students here from Mumbai every year. And this one girl, said to me, oh, I understand Savitri so beautifully, 15 years old. She said, I just read it and I read it and I read it. Exactly. And I can't stop reading it. I, I believe it. I, listen, it, it, I went to the uh, corner there in the street uh, where I buy soap and things like that from this older Tamil man. And he told me, one day I went to the bank to get some money and the ATM didn't work, so I came and I said, oh, you know, it doesn't work. Oh, I can give you how much you need, 500 rupees here. I lend you 500 rupees. I said, well, thank you very much. I took the 500 and we had a little talk and all that. He has seen the mother several times. He said, I saw the mother on the balcony, yeah. at the balcony road, and I saw her in Park Guest House. He told me, and now he's not there, he's not well, and he's, yeah. see, he's closed his little shop, and so I don't get to see him. But, you know, it's like, it, and garbed in beggar robes, he yes. walks the one. He walks the one, yes. You know, so, <clears throat> everybody's well. Yes. And so I was saying that, keep it anonymous, but get a record of what the people um, have experienced in yeah. even the spiritual experiences. They write them down. Nobody knows who it, it is. It would have to be anonymous, yes. Yes. Because people don't want to talk about it. First of it. all, they don't want, and it's not good if it's with the name, then, oh, I had that. Yeah, it's, yeah, you know, exactly. that's, that doesn't yes, work. Yes. But if it is anonymous, it is good to know that people do have contacts, you know. They do have, they do have sometimes peace that they don't know where it comes from and they are just you know invaded with the peace so, so that's one of the things that would be nice Good. i think this morning you sent me an email with a beautiful painting i want to ask about that painting what did i send i sent you an email there must be judson or by mistake it went to you <laughs> Beautiful. Did you send an email? I just said you'll be there. You'll be there on time. Oh, I just said, uh, 
I had a chance and to send the email <sighs> saying great will will uh, will be there, you know, for the recording, yeah. and you added a picture. What picture is that? <laughs> he got caught. <laughs> Very interesting. Which one was it? Was it the one? It's a being. It's a being with with everything around yes, him yes. and his eyes, and there's three sides. Yes, and he's holding. <coughs> he's doing mantra. Yeah, and he moves. And he moves. Oh, I know which one yes, it yes, is. Yes, I know which one it is. Uh, it is a psychedelic uh, yeah. angel kind of yeah. thing, and it's funny because on the on the on the email it moves you know it's not yeah. like static like that so he's got right. his head moving yeah, like yeah, that and yeah. his eyes going <laughs> like that <laughs> <laughs> but this is the, this is the california side of things okay, okay. <laughs> got it got it <laughs> back to our talk um let's take a few minutes break okay and, and we'll uh, continue because i want to ask